My name is Rosina. I'm a banker, I'm a biker, an event planner. I let one out. <laughs> Salsa dancer. Let's go again, don't worry. Hello. Once again, my name is Salsa Rosie and you're welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, this week I have something very different, or this is slightly different, but it promises to be exciting. So I have this friend sitting right here. She calls herself Ivy and your name underscore. And that's what she calls herself everywhere on all social handles, Twitter, um, Instagram, everywhere, right? Pretty much everywhere. Snapchat, yeah. you know. Everywhere yeah. necessary. Yes. <laughs> and I know her for having very strong opinions on issues. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Ivy, you're welcome. Thanks. I've known you for so long. I mean, we're looking at possibly two decades. Wow. Yeah. That, your viewers think... I know, I've known you for a long time, possibly two decades. We've yeah, done yeah, a lot of yeah. dancing and... Um, um, yeah, talking about create. I mean, before I started the YouTube channel and all that, we had a few discussions on that and all that. So I've known you for quite a bit. But then, the reason why you're here today is that um, sometime last week, um, there was a book launch that caused a lot of stare in the Ghanaian community. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. The book, I Am Not Yvonne Nelson. And it caused a lot of stare right from the launch and it still caused a lot of stare. I've been to so many places and so many social gatherings and that topic is becomes a topic of discussion one way or the other but i've been following ivy especially on her twitter um, handle and i've seen her post um a few of her impressions or comments yes, on or the book and i found them very interesting so i reached out to her and i said ivy why don't you join me in the studio today and let's discuss what your opinions are so let's just get on with it what were your general what, what is your general opinion of the book? Because I know you have read it, unlike others who are criticizing, but I know you have read it. Because when I called you, you said I'm on chapter four, and I'm still five, five and I'm I still going five when, when I called you, yes. Yeah. So what's your general opinion on the book? I think for anybody who grew up in a single parent home, I think most of us grew up in a single parent home. I don't know what the percentages are, but I'm sure there are more Ghanaians who grew up in a single parent home than Ghanaians who grew up with both parents. And so my first um, opinion about the book was, wow, finally someone gets to speak up. Because we are one of the most proper value families in the world. Mm. Country that pushes proper family values in the world. And you would think that a lot of us, or a lot of people will grow up in the same Space as their parents and so for me that was the first trigger I was like wait someone is finally talking about that silent thing that nobody talks about and has gradually become normal okay you know it's 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 a silly thing to happen to anyone but for some weird reason it's suddenly so normal only papa ni ho only mommy only papa pen and share no oh oh are you okay you know mm. so i feel like for me it was the first time i was like wow someone finally opened up about about this and yeah i think that was it okay um one of the critics that have been one of the criticisms that have come up with the book is that she probably revealed a bit too much what do you think of that um it's a memoir okay <laughs> she's, she's literally writing myself but adult version I don't know, you couldn't lie to your teacher that you had blue eyes when you had black eyes when you were writing myself. Mm. Why should you do that when you're talking about yourself as an adult and your experiences? I mean, if you've read the book, the first, the first page of the book tells you what she went through to put it down in the first place. She knew you people would come at her. She knew. She knew that some people would say, she was a devil and a bad girl and all the things that people are saying she knew but she still looked beyond that and for me like big ups to her seriously it takes a lot of gut and a lot of and i can imagine that writing this book would also trigger a lot of memories that you bury because of pain okay. and for me for someone to do that Kudos to her therapist. I hope there was a therapist, but she needs it, and I'm I'm I, I'm hoping she got it. So kudos, because it won't be easy at all. Okay. So which story 
Okay, so of all the, the memoirs, of all the stories of your life that she, she spoke about, which one mm -hmm. jumped at you the most? Which one did you read and go like, wow? It was the teacher. Mm -hmm. It was the beginning of the story, honestly, okay. because, and that's what kept me going to the next chapter and the next chapter, because I saw something familiar. Now, if you grew up in a normal Ghanaian school, I'm not talking about Muamoko or Montessori, no. Like, Ghanaian schools where people and teachers don't mind their business. You would know where she's coming from. A teacher literally saw register, saw two surnames. Mm. That's where they say. Saw two kids under 10 years who were just sitting there. They didn't even look alike. And they were children. And they were kids. And he called them and said, when you go home, go and ask your parents if you are related. And that is what has hurt her. Because for, for until that moment, it was never a big deal because she's seen a lot of people grow up without their parents or without their dad or without but their mother. Like yeah, that but suddenly, like yeah, it suddenly felt like, oh, is that why I haven't seen a father? And it has followed her. One statement by a teacher who could not mind his business. <laughs> Like, look, 38 years of her life, that one statement is what has caused all of this, okay. you know. And yeah, if it was me, I'll find that teacher because fortunately for me, I had good teachers. I had teachers who would support and talk to me back in school. And it wasn't about, they noticed the moment there was a separation, they noticed. Okay. And they called my mom in for a meeting and they said, okay, you know what, don't stress her out. Anytime she comes to school, Mr. Dunkwa, he was amazing. I think now he's a reverend or something. Okay. And he would sit me down and try to talk to me and warm me back into understanding that it's okay and everything will be fine. You know, that kind of vibe. So for me, that was so I feel like if she had even gotten a teacher like that, it would have probably been different. Okay. You know. Now, knowing that she had some form, form of identity crisis, do you think well just do you think she was looking for a father throughout her life when i'm saying not her father but was she looking for a father throughout her life what do you think i think she was looking for the truth hmm. i think she had gotten to that point where it wasn't about a father anymore it was about i just want to know the truth Look, she's 38. What does she need a father for? She has her own money. Do you get it? What has triggered it? Because from the book, you realize she started about two two or three years ago. Okay. That was when she started putting it together. Okay. A year or... Yeah, I think two or three years. Okay. So, that was when she was 35. She has her own place. She has a beautiful child. She's doing well in her career. All her movies are a hit. So, so, really, she, didn't so need to look she just for... needed the truth. It got to it went beyond wanting a father to just wanting to know the truth. Okay, now let's go back in time to the mother. Okay. So um, the mother is the holder of all truth as 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 we think it, you know. Sometimes and you don't know. and <laughs> <laughs> That is also another yeah. thing. So Maybe the question is, off. yeah. So the question is, so looking at the mother's angle, do you think this whole situation is actually a fault of her mother, whether in the inability to tell the daughter the truth that she was so seeking for, or did she have a right to keep the truth away from her? And once she's, you know, taking good care of her, giving her the best of life. She probably didn't have a right to know who her father was if she, the mother, chooses to keep that quiet. Where, where do you place her mother in all of this? Because she celebrated her mother as a hero yeah. before, yeah. and now the hero in time past is now the villain. So let's look, let's look, look at the mother and see the part it plays, especially in a, in a society like you rightly say. You can't really speak ill of the elderly we want everything to be perfect we preach the perfect family but 
for I mean in reality nothing yeah. is really See, as perfect as it seems. I promise you that there are even people who had both mother and father at home mm -hmm. and never felt parenting. Yeah. You see, there were there are still people who so I feel like here in in I don't know if it's an African thing. I think it's an African thing because when you watch kids you realize oh Africans can relate to the same style of parenting. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why we think it stops at putting food on the table. Okay. So, first of personally, I know that her mother might have a good reason for keeping it, but I don't think it was a good reason enough. I am totally against parents who think that because they brought you into the world, they have authority, control, da, da, da. no. Even the Bible says, guide the child. You get it? Guide. You, you, you don't own the child. That's why, even, again, the, even the Bible says, As in the child is it's, beginning it's, to, it's, yeah, for you to care for. For you to care for. But it's not your bag. Mm. You didn't enter a Gucci shop and buy it. You didn't enter a boutique. And, it's not a shoe. Do you get it? It's a human being that has been placed in your care. And when you start to see it like that, you give it the same care you probably give to your plant or you give to your dog. Mm. You get it, cause you don't tell, especially cats. You don't tell the cat what to do. A cat will do whatever they want. Yours is put food there and then guide it. Do you get it? And so personally, I don't think that the mom, for whatever reason, she may have a valid reason, but I think the entitlement with which parents think it's okay to keep things from us, especially things that will affect us and have to do with us like is it your information it's not your information yeah you brought me into this world yeah it was whatever thing you thought was a mistake that brought me into this world but and then what was that mistake see i promise you that maybe the, the mom doesn't want her to know because she thinks he's irresponsible or he hurt her badly or she, she doesn't want to have anything to do with him. Or she doesn't want to have anything to do with him. Eh? Tell him that this is but your child. If one. that is the man's character, you are not the one to tell the child. The child will know. The child will know. Like, you have mothers telling you all sorts of things about your fathers. And then you meet them and you go like, oh, it wasn't like that. You have other situations where... You miss them, you're like, yeah. My mom knew what she was talking about. I have want life. nothing to do with this person. And yeah. you walk away, but you know the truth. Juicy, like, I don't have to have a relationship with him. I just want to know how he looks like. Does he exist? Who is he? I want to have a conversation to, with a him. To yeah. I think is my dad. Now show me that so that I will go and ask him, why did you leave me with my mother? Why didn't you check in on me? That's not your job as ever. Let the father answer the question. Anyway. Because two people had me. So you have a right As to long as you them. didn't have it from the hospital, which is also a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> two people had me. Okay. You get it. So why are you depriving me from hearing the other side of the story if you think your story is so perfect? Okay. So now. Let me just call you for Nelson's book as the book of truth. So basically, she was giving her truth out there. Let me just ask. She has a daughter. People think that the daughter might be stigmatized in schools, especially for the parts that have to do with some of the partners that she's had. You know, the fact that she had to terminate her baby unwillingly and all of that. People feel like that information may stigmatize her, her daughter in school and may also cause her some form of psychological damage. Psycho <laughs> <laughs> Guys, well, let's, some, some kind let's of be damage real. Because, let's be real. You know, she's going to be obsessed if, by the mother when do you, she grows up. Do you realize... Why you take me through this whole up No. I think, I think it's the other way around. Mm. Because you're trying to break a generational case let's say 
from a generational care's point of view or a generational behavior, right? The reason she feels she turned out the way she did is because she was deprived of the truth. Okay. She's giving that to her daughter. Simple. I was deprived of not knowing the truth. Daughter, I don't want you to end up like me. This is your father. Spend time with him if you want. If you don't want, come to me. I can provide for you. I can take care of you. I can give you all the experiences you want, but this is your father. These are the mistakes I've made. This is the mistakes I've made. Oh, Learn oh. from it. <laughs> Learn from it. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. The fact that daddy isn't around doesn't mean that you should fall for any useless guy. You see, learn from it. I think she acknowledges in the book that some of her relationships were silly. Like, she Not probably, yeah, she, she probably, probably wouldn't have that done now. that now. Yeah. She acknowledged that in the book. If you read a book, you won't be making those comments. She acknowledged it that, yeah, some of the things I have done, I wouldn't talk about it. I was ashamed of myself. I won't talk about it if not for this book. Okay, so Ivy, um, thank you so much for coming in. And I must applaud um, Yvonne Nelson for coming out with the book. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to various sections of the book, not just women. People who don't know their fathers, who wish they knew their fathers. People who wish their parents told them a truth or another. I think that a lot of people can relate. And even some of the mistakes she counts, she counts in the book some people can relate to it well some people think that um, she shouldn't have put all that in a book but to be honest that's not for you to decide what kind of therapy she thinks is good and what she feels her life would be used for you know because some people feel okay so there's one thing counseling people based on what you know there's another thing counseling people based on your life experiences based on the mistakes you've made based on the experiences you've been through and hoping that somebody else would use these experiences to better themselves. So I think that she's done a yeoman's job, something a lot of women will not be able to do. I've actually flirted with memoirs for a long time, you know. Mm. I've written little notes here and there when I, I go I through actually, when I, I think, go through issues. So I yeah, have a lot of I voice think, notes yeah. and I have a lot of videos I take of it's myself I've, I've documenting. I but do. you know, I mean, because sometimes putting it out there, you just sit back like, hey, I'm gonna be judged. I'm going to be criticized, I'm going to be insulted, and then you just, you know, get back into your shell, and then, you know. So I must applaud her for the courage that she displayed, and I hope that she's able to handle the criticisms, and I do hope that people actually read the book. Yeah, read it. Read the book, Stop because in the beginning, I mean, people were fascinated by the chapter 8, and they were going on and on, why is he mentioning my favorite, you know, my favorite rapper? my favorite person, my favorite is that, but in the long run, when you actually read the book, I think it's, it's, it's deeper than it's that. Deeper. It's way deeper than that, yeah. So read the book. I'm, even, I'm not Yvonne Nelson, read it. Maybe sometime you hear, I am not <laughs> Rosina. <laughs> <laughs> or I am not Ivy, nah, and you know. I'm your mom and dad. Well, you so copy. Oh <laughs> man, you, you, you just get me out. Anyway, copy. <laughs> it was awesome having you, Ivy. Thank you. And um, once again, she's Ivy and your name on all social media handles. So Ivy and your name underscore yeah, on all social media handles. I wanted to say something. Same yeah. as me, Salsa Rosie, on all social media handles. Listen, I saw something somewhere. Okay. It said, you can't Google experience. Mm. And I think that it's one of the most powerful things I've heard this week. Um, this is someone's experience. Just learn from it. Yeah. If you thought there was a part in the book that was bad, don't it do it. Don't do it. That's all she's saying. So if the part was good, take it. Take it. If, if it made sense it. to you, if you related to if it. If you relate to it, you know you're not. If like, you oh, need you to go what? back, yeah. You know, it felt really good but reading again, some parts. I mean, we're wrapping up, but then again, you see this issue about psychologists, right? Do you think we have enough of them in Ghana? We don't. Um, I had to go through therapy a year ago okay. a year by this time i was in therapy all right and like i'm saying it takes a lot to remember some of these traumatic experiences because your brain buries them mm -hmm. and i can tell you that we don't have a lot my therapist only had time for me once a week okay for one hour and sometimes i'd have to sit and wait because maybe 
she has to see five people within a very short period. Some of the therapists to when you go, it's not that they will turn themselves into pastors. So it's really difficult finding a therapist who will just listen without judging you and trying to pray for you and trying to cast out cast demons. The demons in you. Yeah. <laughs> so it puts a lot of people off as well. But we need we, we definitely need a lot more therapists. Okay. Unfortunately that's why it's expensive. You know. But yeah, it's it's a yeah, good thing to that, have. Let's hope that um, a lot of therapists will come Talking out about it heals. Yeah. And we need it. We need it. Okay. All right. Thank you once again, Ivy. It's been a pleasure, like always. So after you're ready, let's go and salsa. I knew it. Let's go and dance salsa. All right then. So thank you so much um, for watching my channel, Salsa Rosie. Tune in again this Friday for another exciting episode. Thank you. <laughs> if you do like this, don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notification button so that you can get more of this content every week. Thank you. Or every day, whatever. Is it okay? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Salsa Rosie.